Can you imagine driving on the Paris Ring Road and coming across a story that sends chills down your spine? That is precisely what happened to Geraldine Berger, the director and producer of the documentary Sankara's Orphans. On that fateful day in August 2006, she overheard whispers about communist Africa that recalled the Soviet era. But what truly piqued her interest were the stories of these orphans. Geraldine was fascinated by the enormity of their journey. I was struck by the epic nature of this story, she recalls. Imagine 600 orphans embarking on a journey to a distant island. It sounded like the start of an extraordinary adventure. Geraldine was consumed with questions. What possessed them to leave everything behind? What dreams did they have as they sailed into the unknown? How did they envision Cuba, and what did their commitment entail? These were the threads of a story that begged to be unraveled, a saga that needed to be told. So, Sankara's Orphans was born, a testament to the bravery and resilience of those who dared to defy the odds and forge their own path in history. In 2019, Geraldine Berger's French documentary, The Orphans of Sankara, won the Best Documentary Prize at the Pan-African Film and Television Festival in Ouagadougou. It told the story of Burkinabe children who were sent to Cuba. Burkina Faso's president, Marxist revolutionary Thomas Sankara, signed an agreement with the Cuban government in 1986, sending 600 children to Cuba for technical and higher education training in fields such as industrial welding, agronomy, medicine, and geology. When the children returned, they were expected to contribute to the development of their African country. The children, ranging in age from 12 to 15, were chosen based on socioeconomic status. The majority came from extremely poor rural Burkina Faso families or were orphans. But the following year, reactionary elements of the Burkina military, as well as American and French intelligence services, assisted Blaise Kampora in a coup that resulted in the assassination of Thomas Sankara. Blaise Kampora unilaterally ended the arrangement with the Cuban government after the revolutionary government was overthrown, telling the kids to go back to Burkina Faso. Blaise Kampore ordered that the teenagers' diplomas not be validated and that they be sent to more remote and distant regions near the borders. He did this out of fear that the teenagers had received some kind of Marxist education or military training and out of concern that they might organize some kind of revolutionary resistance to the coup government. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're looking at what has become of the 600 orphans of Sankara. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications in order not to miss out on my future uploads. As the nation gets ready to mark the 32nd anniversary of President Thomas Sankara's murder in Burkina Faso on October 15, 1987, The Orphans of Sankara, a documentary helmed by French director Geraldine Berger, explores one of this revolutionary regime's main undertakings. The program's goal in 1986 was to send 600 impoverished and rural kids to Cuba in order to teach them a trade and aid in the nation's development. This is an absolutely fascinating documentary. It's a forgotten and little-known story, a narrative that thrusts us into the core of Burkina Faso presidents Blaise Kampora and Thomas Sankara's succeeding regimes. Two paths crossed, among them, the 600 orphans whose late father Thomas Sankara had wanted to be among the nation's elite. He made the decision to transfer 600 impoverished and rural children to Cuba three years after taking office in 1983, with the mission of learning a trade and returning to develop their country amidst the revolution. The assassination of President Thomas Sankara on October 15, 1987, and the subsequent collapse of the revolution he had spearheaded by his erstwhile ally Blaise Kampara would undermine this idyllic society to such an extent that it would be nearly lost to memory and vanish from Burkina Faso's collective consciousness. A discovery via radio. It is now impossible to overlook this tale because of the French director Geraldine Berger's documentary, The Orphans of Sankara. Geraldine Berger first learned about the story of the 600 Burkina orphans while listening to the program Le Freak Enchanté, which was hosted by French ethnologist Vladimir Cagnolari and Ivorian journalist Sor Solo on the French public radio station France Inter. The final episode of this show aired this summer. 
this story's epic quality got to me. The director, Geraldine Berger. On August 23, 2006, Geraldine Berger learns about communist Africa, the one from the Soviet Union, while driving on the Paris Ring Road. However, she finds the tale of these orphans to be particularly fascinating. I was struck by the epic nature of this story, she remembers. I had never read or heard of a children's story like this. I could already see the potential for an interesting story with 600 orphans moving to a far-off island. I was curious about their exact plans when they departed, the reasons behind their decision to travel to the unknown, their perception of Cuba, and the significance of their vow. Geraldine Berger chooses to make a movie about this period of Burkina Faso's modern history and its ties to Cuba after doing some research. She runs into a brick wall for the next 2.5 years. No one remembers these orphans, and her appeals for witnesses go unanswered. Eventually, in March 2009, she locates the trace of one of the few former orphans who had left Burkina Faso in Spain thanks to online alerts. It was not his desire to testify, Geraldine Berger claims. Despite my desperation, he informed me of the existence of an association of ex-Cubans and provided me with their phone number. Wonder. It was the rainy season there, so when I called, I could hardly hear anything. I had to seize this opportunity. Batcher, a member of the association, promptly proposed that I visit them during their annual assembly. After that, things picked up speed. I located a producer and started location scouting. A genuinely sensational movie. After 10 years, the outcome is a heartfelt, genuinely moving movie that exudes brotherhood and sincerity. The film opens with the magnificent music of Burkinebi music icon Abdoulaye Sissa. It also features a lengthy sequence shot of the people's house, which represents the nation's struggles and modern democracy. Next are the remarks made by the late President Thomas Sankara in October 1983 to the people of Fada Ngorma, in the country's east. You don't have enough offices very well. You don't have hospitals, schools, dams, gutters, or roads. You're going to get them. Thomas Sankara declared his regime to be revolutionary within two months of assuming power not only in an ideological sense, but also in a practical, hands-on sense, realizing that the success of the project hinged in part on the populace's willingness to take initiative and get to work. And in order to satisfy this demand, while providing some of the most vulnerable with hope for the future, he chooses to send 600 young Burkinibs to Cuba for training with the aim of bringing back to their home country the knowledge and proficiency that was lacking in many areas at the time. The president of Burkina Faso also benefited from Fidel Castro's scholarship offered to him. Thus, in 1986, 600 impoverished and rural children from Burkina Faso were sent to Cuba to learn a trade and then returned to develop their country during the revolution. It was an incredible voyage since they were all learning about airplanes for the first time. After arriving in Cuba, all of the kids were taken to the Isle of Youth which at the time stood as a testament to intercultural understanding and friendship, and was situated a few tens of kilometers off the province of Havana's southern coast. During the challenging initial weeks, roughly 15 kids even made an attempt to flee, hoping to make their way back to Burkina on foot. Then, albeit haphazardly, adaptation happened. The young Burkinibis were trained for the military in addition to attending classes and working by hand on the plantations that surrounded the school complex where they were living. It was required of children from a respectable communist nation to be proficient with weapons. The dreams end and Thomas Sankara's assassination. Shortly after arriving in Cuba in November 1986, President Thomas Sankara made the decision to pay a visit to his young prodigies. He personally greeted each of them when he arrived, a gesture that they still deeply recall to this day. They all knew that the nation looked on them to lead by example after this presidential visit, and when they found out about President Thomas Sankara's assassination a year later, in October 1987, it was as though everything was falling apart. For them, Thomas Sankara was not just a fatherly figure, but also the one who had given their lives purpose. According to Athanase Buddha, they didn't want to officially tell us that he was dead. And because I didn't know my dad, I think I counted it among the darkest pages of my life. 
The 600 orphans faced unsurmountable challenges after this murder. Those deemed dangerous revolutionaries were not welcome in Blaise Kampora's new regime. They asked for and got the cessation of their military training from the Cuban government. Their living conditions became considerably more difficult when he revoked the Burkinag scholarship that had been granted to them up until that point. The United States blockade of Cuba exacerbated the nation's economic circumstances concurrently. The little orphans on the Isle of Youth had only sweetened water and bread for breakfast. Their relationships grew closer and education turned into a lifesaver. A fortunate few orphan were adopted by Cuban families. A chance for them to experience love and appreciation. Every single one of the 600 orphans went back to Burkina after completing their education. Here is where things get complicated for them. The Kampora regime has dispersed them all over the country, making it impossible for them to get together and try to stage a coup. They are also marginalized and have a hard time getting diploma equivalents. Many people experience depression and unemployment. All of the orphans saw the 30 and 31 2014 popular uprising and the fall of the Blaise Kampore regime as a sign of hope, great relief, and deliverance. Thanks to their affiliation, they are currently in talks with the authorities and are not giving up on finding a solution for every former orphan. That brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please share with us your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to leave a like and turn on notifications to be notified on our future uploads.